you've got games on Battlefield that do pander to the casuals. I mean, at the old days, Battlefield 2, 2142, Battlefield 1942, you'd always get teamwork. I can't remember last time I had teamwork in a Battlefield game. Good yeah. yeah, get wrecked, motherfuckers. Uh, hardcore shoot nowadays just means high damage output. Doesn't mean anything else. No. So we are here, postscriptum open beta. Although I think objectively, is it open? Because the only way to join is to pre-order the game. Still, as I've said before, if you don't enjoy the game at release, you can always request a refund, so there is that. But I think it would still be more appropriate for this to be called kind of like a closed beta or just beta. Anyway, semantics. It starts today from 6pm GMT. I'm going to be live and playing, so check out the link down below for my Twitch channel. The game itself has gone through a huge amount of improvement from its early testing, and now games roll on properly. For example, frames have been significantly improved. MSPs, that's mobile spawn points, when driving them, you can actually see where stopping a vehicle in your area will allow players to respawn instead of just guesstimating it and hopefully eliminating the issues around players moving MSPs. The game itself is set for an August 9th release, that's only three weeks away. The beta is going to run on 24-7 until that release date. So it's going to be interesting to see how the community develops and how my concerns about compromised team play across games which do very well for themselves actually play out. So far, Postscriptum has been pretty hit and miss in terms of team play in my experience, but that's only the same as everything these days. Uh, you can check out the last episode of Below the Line if you want more information about my thoughts on that. I'm going to leave your comments about that. If you plan on getting involved, I'd like to know your hopes and expectations about the game. Specifically, what is it about Postscriptum that has got you so excited when others have fallen flat? The devs themselves say that despite the overwhelmingly positive reaction, they are aware of ongoing bugs and issues that are keeping players from enjoying the game to the fullest, but that's what this testing period is about, and you can give your feedback and thoughts to them on this through their various platforms like Discord and the forum. It's good to hear from the devs that from their initial impression of optimization, they've realized they didn't go far enough and they want to continue working on this to provide the most stable version of the game for players at release, no matter their system specs. Here is a little update for you if you didn't know already the details about the game. It's 40v40, you can parachute in onto the action, but not every map. Commanders have artillery and airstrike support that is AI controlled. Vehicles use realistic values on their turret speed and say armor thickness maps on an authentic one-to-one -one scale. You can base build and create fortifications, although what you can make is dependent on, you know, whether you're attacking or defending. Logistics teams will fortify and rearm units on the ground, and five maps make up a total of a 140 km square playing area. During the beta, you're going to be playing as either the British Airborne, 30 Corps, the Wehrmacht, Waffen SS, and there's going to be US Airborne, but post-release. And the US will be specifically in a free update post-release, exciting that it's going to give you access to the weapons that we all know, like M1 Garand, BAR, Thompson, M1911, as well as other stuff, also making a full equipment complement of 15 different items. Now that's all the positives, but it's worth mentioning a few gripes as well. Destruction is probably being the biggest one. Now it is of course absolutely true that Postscriptum is being made as an indie game, and while people's expectations are very high, which is a good thing because it shows they love the concept of the game, you do need to try and temper that a little versus what is reasonably possible with a team of only a small size comparatively to other devs. With that said though, there are issues that I feel should have been looked at more. For example, minor level of destruction. Now look, we're not talking about bringing down buildings, I know people want that, but just, you know, come on. I know people want to see that in a game of this size, and especially with some of the armaments like, you know, airstrikes and stuff coming in, it does look a little silly when you have a bomb drop and it hits a building and just nothing happens. But again, you kind of just have to temper your reality, you know, you have to kind of suspend your disbelief. What should be, though, is the destruction of, say, fences and telegraph poles. The fact that they are not, even by vehicles, even by tanks, is heavily immersion breaking. Take my recent tanking experience where an incoming enemy shell bounded off a telegraph pole. It's just a little bit crazy, and minor destruction at this level isn't something that's 
you know, new. It's been around for a long time, being able to sort of drive around, knock over a fence. It would have been worth the difficulty to make it happen, even if it happened in a really basic way, where it wasn't like compartmentalized damage where it's just smashing through little sections. Let's say you went up to a fence and knocked the whole fence over. Fine, but you know, just so long as something happens there. Instead, being able to drive up to it with a vehicle and hitting it like it's a brick wall, it does smash your immersion. And like I say, it does kind of damage the mechanics a bit as well. My other main gripe is still with the MSPs. Now in their favour the devs have done just about everything that they can not to implement the system like with squad where squad leaders have to physically approve your vehicle access request and that can be frustrating because sometimes there is the downside to that, there's a positive but the downside to that is that you might be in a situation where your squad leader is not a good squad leader and therefore they restrict you from actually being able to competently move things around when they urgently need to be moved. So in postscriptum, anybody can grab the vehicles, unless say it's a tank. But here's the thing, MSPs, mobile spawn points, are essential and can literally make or break a game. So having some donut player reminiscent of the noob from Battlefield Friends grab it and then drive it into the heart of the enemy is more than frustrating. I don't know why the devs are very resistant to making a fairly simple change like squad leader approval when the game is so heavily focused on team coordination anyway, but they won't and so we'll see how that plays out. I already have several videos recorded where I can highlight and point to situations in an entire round where one player has basically lost us the game by moving the MSP. To me, that is so significantly game breaking that it deserves to be changed, but we'll see what happens and as I say I'll continue to play through rounds and see how that goes but I might have another video about that talking about it uh, pretty soon. Now as I say they have done just about though everything else in terms of giving a heads up graphical notification to players saying hey what are you doing with that MSP so I guess from one point of view this is actually going to be pretty interesting in an exercise in terms of is it possible to make random public players do what they are meant to do with all on-screen UI possible and when I say do what they're meant to do we're not talking about saying hey you you have to specifically go here and do this and do this and you're not allowed to think for yourself no it's it's no, it's nowhere near as severe as that all it's literally saying is hey you know this thing which is like really important for the entire team could you really be you know kind of cool and just not like ruin the entire game for every single person that's basically all it's asking to do it's just one vehicle and all they have to do is not drive it to an area where people can't respawn or drive it to the point where it accidentally gets destroyed or you know whatever so it's really not asking a lot now if the answer to the question can you expect public players to actually listen to these notifications and take note of them if the answer to that is still no well, then that's actually going to be useful information for me going forward, not just for this, but for other games too. So in one way, it's going to be quite a nice experiment because it's basically asking, are people that are playing these games actually physically capable of reading? And if the answer to that is no, it's pretty disturbing on quite a few levels, actually. Postscriptum is live from today and ongoing for the next few weeks. I'm going to be playing it a lot. So if you want to come and join in and you want to join me on the live stream, check out the Twitch link down below and drop me a follow there so you know when I'm going to be playing live and you get that notification. Thanks for watching as always guys, if you enjoyed the video drop a like, help support me and the channel, I'll be back soon with some more of Postscriptum.